And when I first saw her, I felt like Mike off of, off the wood. We saw Alicia. Like when I talk about love at first sight, I'm serious. This is the truth. She was like to be the baddest thing I ever seen in my life. Now you should follow suit and just get to the back. People gonna talk either good or it's bad. I see people gonna talk either good or it's bad. Get off my feet, man. Nah. You gotta get out the world. Hey, let you too, okay? You gotta go for a little, okay? You gotta go. <laughs> okay, welcome back to the Empress Kita Show. I have special guests. Hey, everybody. This is my brother and his wife, Tiffany. We're gonna talk about love and marriage and relationships and what it takes to make it through. Without further ado, I'm gonna let them introduce themselves and we're getting into the video. So tell us about these blankets here, guys. My blanket. Green Bay Packers. I have been a Green Bay fan since before I met Celis, and it just so happened he's from Chicago. He had a problem with me being a Green Bay fan, so our house is divided. Can't do that. Can't be a Packers fan. I'm a Bears fan. Now, that's like the ultimate rivalry in, in NFL football. The house is divided. I always love baby. But during this time of year, football season, it get real. The trash talking gets real. You say you're a Green Bay Packers fan. Tiffany, are you from Milwaukee? I'm actually from Atmore, Alabama. It's a small town near Whoa. Mobile, Alabama. I'm from the South. I'm live across the street from Cottonfield. That's our country it is. I'm from Chicago. I went down to Huffos. It was a culture shock for me. You know, in Chicago, you used to seeing loose dogs. I'm in the front of the house. It's a loose horse from the past. I said, man, wait, in the world is going on here? I said, mom was talking about, oh, that did, that did him a horse. And it was like normal for us. I said, oh my goodness, I'm in the country. City boy, country girl. When did you two meet? How did you guys meet? Well, my sister went to Alabama A and M. A and M, right here. A and M. I was at UAB in Birmingham at the time. He went to Alabama A and M, and I used to go visit my sister. He hung around the same group of people as my sister, so they were all in the circle together, and that's how I first met him. We were just friends, you know. February of 2010. Ten years since we first met each other, and when I first saw her. I feel like Mike off of, off the wood. We saw Alicia. Like when I talk about love at first sight, I'm serious. This is the truth. She was like to be the baddest thing I ever seen in my life. We was at AM, we played the speed day, played music and you stop and wherever you're at in front of the person, you have to talk to them. It's like kind of a social activity. I just want to land in front of her. So I'm cheating, I'm skipping the chairs. I still didn't get a chance to me. I said, you know what? I'm gonna meet her though. I met him, oh, you played spades. I told him he was too short, but he was cute. I looked at her and told her, I'm going to cuff you and look away at that. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first opinion of each other? Which I kind of already touched on that. My first opinion of Celis was that he was very charming, cute, nice. And he used this slang. He probably used it with all of the girls. <laughs> he would say like, what's up, ma? And I'm like, <laughs> talked a lot. I like that. When you meet someone, y'all talking, or even if you go on a date, you don't want awkward silence. It was never awkward. Small. It was small. Thank you emphasizing that. Like, <laughs> like, dang, I know that. I'm sorry, but I married you. Know, I'm just I know. But just, my first impression with her was when I was just like in shock, like, oh, she's the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. I had to get through that phase. He saw me. He was like, Vanessa, that's your sister. And I said, the Lord is good. Come here. When did you know that y'all was the one for each other? Like I said, when I first saw her, the Lord told me you the one for me. I'm a nice person. I'm a good guy. My main thing was just getting to know her, seeing where she come from, her likes, her, her dislikes. About three or four years, we were friends. The fine friends. <laughs> <laughs> we talked on the phone, we saw each other, we hung out with each other. We never were intimate. Well, the first two or three years, we were just friends. We weren't intimate. We dated other people, talked to other people. We became intimate, but it happened kind of on accident. Oh, accident? <laughs> well, we were drinking. Were we not? But why y'all say it oh, accident? Like, so I called it under the influence. But we were friends still. And that's the first time I was crossing that line. If you want to call it an accident. Anyway, I knew I liked him more than a friend when he had a pregnancy scare. End up telling me about it and I was like hurt. Wait, hold up. Why am I so upset about this? But that's when I realized that I actually liked him more than just a friend. We got married. It was December of 2014. My baby just had a five year anniversary. Five years strong now. What is the best and worst habit of each other? Ooh. Keep it PG, please. We keep it PG. 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 That's why it was an accident. Anyway, the best habit <laughs> he has 
is he's always positive. He sees the good in everything. And it kind of annoys me sometimes. But <laughs> his worst habit is he tries to be my counselor. Because <laughs> he has a career in counseling. I tell him don't don't counsel me. That's his worst habit to me. I would say my wife's best habit is that she go get it. When she got her mind to something, there's no stopping it. My baby, she a hustler. She even find a way out of no way. She's a hard worker. One of her worst habits is, I'm sorry, but I gotta do this to you. She sucks her thumb. <laughs> she sucks her thumb and she holds a pillow like a big baby. I said, babe, why you just, you just put my business? It's okay, but I still love you. I think we argue about what we're not getting from each other. If I feel like I'm not getting what I need from him, you know, it's an argument. I would agree. That's one of my biggest arguments is what we're not getting from each other. You know, with a marriage, it's really about figuring out what each other's needs are. It's about meeting the need. Everybody's different. Everybody comes from different environments, different upbringings. So you really have to understand your mate to be able to give them what they need. As you are understanding your mate, that's when you really get to the point where I know what she needs or I know what he needs. So I need to give that to him because what well, one is just you taking two people and you're mushing them together. together. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I was a little, little long-winded. But... What is the biggest lesson you've learned in marriage thus far? I grew up in a single parent household. I had my mom. She did everything. I grew up very I developed the I can do it myself mentality. It carried over into my relationship. In my mind, I felt like I don't need you to do certain things for me. I learned that you have to communicate those things. Being submissive is a big part of marriage. I'm still working on that. I didn't know how to do that. I'm still a work in progress, but that's the biggest lesson I've learned marriage is that you have to be able to submit as a woman. A man has to feel like he's the man. The biggest lesson that I've learned is that being the man and a husband, I don't think a lot of people really realize how big that role is. What I've learned is that being a husband, it requires a lot of patience. It requires a lot of understanding. Soul searching yourself to be able to understand my wife. A lot of times the arguments come because this is a miscommunication of some way. She knows this way, I know this way. As a man, you have to be able to be patient, adjust the way you talk to your spouse. You're trying to create peace and unity between each other. I would say throughout the five years, I've grown to have a lot of patience, a lot of understanding to be able to do the, the necessary thing that needs to be done to be able to maintain the marriage. And as a man, he holds a lot of the weight of how, how the marriage operates based off how we react. Last question, guys. If you could go back to your wedding day, what would you <laughs> tell yourself and say, hey, this is what you need to know? <laughs> I would tell myself, hey, you really know what you're getting yourself into, friend? And then I would say, I know, let's do it then. I would give myself a pep talk before I did like a big game. You ready for the game? Let's go. Let's do it. So marriage is a football game. No, it's, it's not a football game. Okay. I would tell myself, he's crazy. No. I would tell myself, get ready, brace yourself for this roller coaster ride. Totally different operation than dating. Not that it would have changed anything. But you know what though? You really let your spouse, it's gonna be a fun ride because at the end of the day, you're remembering that I'm in this for life. So if you in it with me, we in it together, let's have fun, let's enjoy our life while we going through the same process of coming better. Any piece of advice to newlyweds or anybody considering marriage? I would tell them to make sure they get premarital counseling. The flame is not gonna always be lit. Sometimes it'll go out, it'll dim, but you can't give up. You just have to find a way to relight it. You see, that's why I love my baby. Wise words from a great woman. <laughs> but I would say that it is a fight to everyday battle. It's going to be having your good days, bad days. If you can tell yourself that no matter what, I'm going to be able to get through this and fight for my marriage and fight for each other. Always remember why you married that person and keep you going. Marriage is beautiful, everybody. If you like this video, thumbs it up. Do it. <laughs>